Photography can sometimes be a bit confusing because of the terminology. For example, what is meant by stopping down the aperture? What about overexposing by a stop or underexposing by a stop? What on earth is a stop? Well, if you want to find out, stick around. Hi, Paul here from Photo Genius. Welcome to my channel where I post weekly photography tutorials. I share tips and tricks. I do occasional gear reviews as well. So if you want to learn how to take better photos with your digital camera, you're in the right place. So please consider subscribing. This video is kindly sponsored by our friends at Skillshare. Now photography is all about light. In fact, photography is the art of capturing light. But how exactly do we measure light? Well, light is measured in something called a stop. And this is a way of measuring either an increase or a decrease in light, with one stop being either a doubling or a halving of light. Now, if this is already starting to sound a bit confusing, don't worry, let me show you how it works. So a great way to demonstrate how this works is by adjusting the ISO on a camera. ISO is a feature on your camera that allows you to make your picture brighter or darker. Now with ISO, if the number doubles, then so does the light entering the camera. So increasing the ISO from 200 to 400 is a doubling of light. Increasing the ISO once again to 800, and we have doubled the light again. And of course, this means if we work backwards, adjusting 800 to 400 is a halving of light. So here I am outside shooting during the golden hour with the Canon T7 1500D. Starting with an ISO of 400 for my first shot, I then adjust the ISO to 800 to increase the exposure by one stop. ISO 1600 is again another increase of one stop. For the fourth image, I drop the ISO down to 200. And finally, at 100 ISO, to give me my final set of five images. Now, if we place the images side by side, it's clear to see the difference in the exposure. Now, remember, with ISO, as the number doubles, so does the light. And a doubling of light is an increase of one stop. And likewise, of course, if we go down with the ISO, every step is a decrease of one stop or a halving of light. Now the great thing about using ISO to demonstrate how this works is that it just makes sense. If I go from 200 ISO to 400 ISO, I've doubled the number. This is also an increase of one stop, which again, as you know, is a doubling of light. And of course, if I go then from 400 ISO to 800 ISO, again, I've doubled the number. That's an increase of another stop, which again is another doubling of light. So the numbers make sense. Now with some cameras, you can increase or decrease the ISO in smaller increments. Let me show you how this works using this Canon ATD. Select ISO on this particular camera and we see the familiar numbers, but increase the ISO and you will see that instead of jumping from 200 to 400, we can increase the ISO in smaller amounts. 250 is a third of a stop increase, 320 is another third, and of course 400 is an increase of one stop. Having the ability to increase ISO in thirds gives the user more flexibility and options. This, however, is not a feature on all cameras. Coming up next, I want to show you how this works using the camera's shutter and aperture. But before we get into that, I want to share with you a very special offer from our friends over at Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creative minds, offering thousands of inspirational classes for creators and creatives alike. With topics that include design, illustration, video, photography, web design and much, much more. Skillshare is an informative and fun way to learn new skills with no ads and all for less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. But Skillshare have a very special offer for fans and viewers of this channel. The first 1,000 people who click on the link in the video description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. 
As a member, you will have unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes that include hands-on projects and even feedback from a community of millions. So if like me, you want to improve on your creative skills, try something new or build on existing passions, make sure you click on the link below this video. And remember the first 1000 people who do will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. So a few moments ago, we looked at how we can adjust the camera's exposure just by adjusting the camera's ISO. And here are the images once again that I took. Now, when you put your camera in the manual mode, you're likely to see something like this on the LCD screen. Now, this is the camera's exposure level indicator. Now, to keep it simple, I'm gonna to refer to this as the camera's light meter. The camera's light meter allows us to measure how much light will be recorded by the camera if we fully press the shutter button. You will see a zero level at the middle, a plus side and a minus side. Here we see the meter displayed on a Canon DSLR and when we press the shutter button halfway this wakes up the meter and we see an indicator marker sitting over to the right at the plus two. Now this means that if I was to fully depress the shutter button to take a picture that image would be overexposed by two stops. To fix the overexposure I'm simply going to lower the ISO by a stop which is 400. Now remember halving the number and you also halve the light. So looking at the meter now, I'm one stop overexposed. So now I'm gonna drop the ISO from 400 to 200 and now the marker sits at the zero, which shows me I have a balanced exposure and I can take my shot. Switch to a Nikon camera and the meter works in exactly the same way. Currently I see I'm underexposing by two stops. So if I double the ISO, I increase the exposure, but I'm still one stop underexposed. So increasing the ISO again to 400 and I now have a balanced meter. Switch into live view and you will now see we have a vertical meter. So now let me show you how the camera's shutter fits into all of this. Now making adjustments to the camera's shutter is just like ISO, another way that you can make your picture brighter or darker. This is known as adjusting the exposure. Now what can be confusing about shutter speeds is the numbers. A shutter speed is shown as a fraction of a second or sometimes actual seconds. Now, although we've spent a lot of time in this tutorial talking about ISO, in fact, ISO is often the last thing you will adjust the camera's shutter offers a much wider range of options. Now here we have a Nikon camera and the shutter speed is set to one four thousandth of a second, which is a very fast shutter speed. Now looking at the camera's light meter, we see a flashing display indicating a massive underexposure, which is down to the shutter being so fast. So I'm going to slow the shutter down by turning the dial on the camera to the left. You can see the shutter speed changing and this is called slowing the shutter down. Now this means the shutter will be open longer and the longer the exposure, the more light the camera can record. So of course we see the meter reacting. And finally, a shutter speed of 1 50th of a second is the right shutter speed to balance our meter. Using the shutter, we can adjust the exposure in increments of one third of a stop. So for example, if we start with a shutter speed of one fiftieth of a second, the light is balanced, but we want to purposely overexpose by one stop. We simply dial to the left to select a slower shutter speed of one twenty-fifth of a second. We've now halved the shutter speed and doubled the light. And of course, the meter clearly shows this. Now the aperture is found in the lens and is another way of adjusting the exposure. The position of the aperture is shown as an F number on the back of the camera. Now the confusing thing about apertures is the way the F numbers work. So let's keep it really simple. A smaller F number is a bigger aperture and a bigger F number is a smaller aperture. Typically, most kit lenses will have an aperture range of around f3.5 to f36, but this does depend on the actual lens. Now, just like the shutter, every change of the aperture is an increase or decrease of one third of a stop. Take a look at this Canon camera and we see that the ISO at 200 
a shutter speed of one tenth of a second and an aperture of f4, I am currently overexposed. So because my aperture is wide open, what I'm going to do is select a bigger f number, which means the aperture is actually getting smaller. And at f5.6, we are now two stops overexposed. Closing the aperture down to f8 reduces the light by another stop. And with an aperture of f11, we now have a balanced exposure. And of course, if we should choose to continue and select a higher f number, we will start to underexpose. So stopping down the aperture is a term that's often used when increasing the f number, but reducing the size of the aperture and the amount of light that can pass through the lens. Now I often get asked questions about filters and in particular ND or neutral density filters. These can be used as a way of reducing light. For example, here I've got a Nissi three stop ND graduated filter. You'll see that the filter is very dark at the top and it's light at the bottom. Now this is rated at three stops. So what you can do is you can put this on the front of the camera lens and it will reduce the light at the top of the frame by three stops. This can be really useful for landscape photography. Let me show you. Taking photos during the golden hour at the end of another sunny day in Brisbane and here is a typical landscape composition where the sky and the last of the sun falling on the trees at the top of the frame is a lot brighter than the bottom of the frame where the foreground is mostly in shade. Now this first image without the filter is okay but the sky is very pale and a touch overexposed and the shadows are clearly very dark. Using the graduated filter effectively reduces the light at the top of the frame by three stops. Now this makes it easier to capture the blue sky, but also slightly raise the exposure in the shadows. So if you'd like to know more about filters and how you can use them to improve your photography, make sure you're subscribed to this channel because I've got some new videos coming out very soon all about filters. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up because it really helps the channel grow. If you want to say hi or leave a question, you can do so in the comments section down below. And I want to say a big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and making it possible. Hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya. Bye.